Hello, it's Stephen Cooley. Everyone knows I'm passionate about real estate. I love answering questions about my industry, whether it's to buyers or sellers or investors or just people who want to own a home. And we get those questions sent to us almost every day from all our social media platforms. We try to answer all those directly and I've picked a few that I think that all our viewers would enjoy the answers to too. So I'm going to read those questions and um, and answer them here online. And so this question's from Jim and um, it says Jim lives in Tega K. So that's in York County and I live just outside of Tega K in Fort Mill. So Jim asks, Stephen, when will interest rates drop? And Jim, in Tiga K, isn't that the golden question that everyone's looking for the answer to now? I can provide you with all the predictions from the economists that are in real estate and add my opinion to that too. Interest rates have leveled out and they're going to stay between six and seven for the remainder of 2023. The indicators say that inflation is getting under control and that we could have a mild recession in 2024. Most likely they will drop rates to counter that recession and rates could drop, in my opinion, back down to in the five to five and a half percent. What this tells me is if you're looking to buy a home, grab the home because home prices are not dropping and you can refinance next year if interest rates drop. Number two, and this is from Denise in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thanks for your question, Denise. And the question is, is the value of my home what the county and city assess the value at? And the answer to that question is no. The county and city have not done an appraisal on your home. It's based on multiple matrix, including what you paid for the house and what they think the general appreciation is in your zip code in your area. Question number three from our viewers, I think you would enjoy the answer to, and it's since Charlotte is a border city, will I save taxes if I buy in South Carolina versus North Carolina? Great question. I've actually been asked that many, many times. It all depends on the price of the home and the location of the property. North Carolina and South Carolina taxes do not vary enough, property taxes do not vary enough for that to be the deciding factor on which home you buy. In South Carolina, if you're ever going to rent that home and become a landlord or that home not be your primary residence, the taxes are going to be a lot more in South Carolina on that property versus North Carolina. That will not matter if it always remains your primary residence. Question number four from Bobby, and Bobby lives in Waxhaw. Bobby says, I bought a home last year. What are the major indicators that will affect the value of my home in the future? Bobby, that's such a great question when we own real estate, and there's multiple answers to that. Number one is the general inflation in our area, and specifically your zip code. The home prices are really tied to the job market and employment. So watch that. As unemployment stays low and salaries go up, so will the price of your home. Question number five comes from a viewer in Gastonia, North Carolina, and the question is, why is there a final walkthrough when you buy a home? And the answer to that is, it's not required, it's just really encouraged because when you put a contract and an offer on that home, it's probably been 45 or 60 days since you did that, and big chance the seller still lived there. And so when the sellers get out of the property, which is usually the day before you buy it, you want to go back over and make sure everything's just like it was when you saw the home and all the negotiated items like refrigerators, washer, dryers are still there before you actually become the owner. Number six, and it comes from Sally in Rock Hill, South Carolina. And Sally asks, Stephen, I'm looking at property with acreage. It seems that all of those have septic tanks. Should I be concerned? First of all, let's tell folks what a septic tank is. When you buy a property, you either have public sewer or you have a septic tank. A septic tank holds all the sewage on the property in a tank that's in the ground and a sewage system takes it to another property. And so when you have a septic tank, you manage that. Historically in our area, we don't have problems with septic tank. There is some unusual property that can be a problem. Have the septic tank inspected before you buy the home and you will know if you've got a problem in that system. 
Number seven, Stephen, I'm looking at buying my first home. Should I buy it alone or should I buy it with my roommates? You know, we're getting this question asked often now, and I think it's a sign that people are buying homes later in life and that they're having roommates instead of significant others, and they're looking at owning real estate. So I think it's a great question. My answer to that is I do not think you should buy it with your roommates. I think you should buy it alone and then rent rooms to your roommates so you can make all the decisions and as they come and go, you're not having to buy the property back from them. Number eight, Stephen, what is the biggest mistake when people buy a home? That's such a great question and I see several mistakes made and it's usually because they didn't pick the right buyer's agent to give them advice when they're buying a home. The biggest mistake I see is not enough inspections are not enough inspections on the systems in the house. There's quite a few inspections that a buyer should have prior to buying a home, which will give a good indication on the future maintenance of that property. The agents here at Stephen Cooley Real Estate give our buyers that great advice. Number nine, can I sell my home without an agent and is that a good idea? Yes, you can sell your home without a real estate agent 98% of people use a realtor and there is a reason great realtors get top dollar under the best condition and oftentimes multiple offers from multiple buyers on your property. Here at Stephen Cooley Real Estate, we've helped over 15,000 local families buy and sell real estate. Hire us as your experts. And the final question today, question number 10 is how do buyer agents get paid? Great question. Professionals have to make a living and they have to get paid. Traditionally, the buyer's agent is paid via the listing agent through the seller who pays all the commissions. You are seeing that change in the future where the buyers will pay the buyer's agent. This is a question to ask when you're buying a home is how is your agent going to get paid and confirming that they will get paid the traditional method or if you're going to be paying them. So ask that question. We've got incredible buyer's agents here at Stephen Cooley Real Estate. So give us a call and we'll go over all those details details with you. I want to thank everyone who sent in those questions and thank you for allowing me to share those online. If you've got questions you want answered and if we can answer those on the program, just reach out to us on all our social media platforms, which is my name, Stephen Cooley.